Hey Frank, nice to see you. Nice to see you. Of course, uh, we've seen the Wellspring before, which is a beautiful reverb. Oh, yeah, but you've got you. something new here at Bristronica, right? Yeah, yeah. Our new device is the Fuzzbillion. And this is kind of a uh, distortion device with 10 billion different sounds available. Okay, <laughs> that's... Hence the, 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 the configuration, right? Yeah, and each of these kind of adjust part of the circuit and allow you to uh, kind of configure the distortion for your own needs. And it works with either guitar level in and out or transformer balance, switchable to transformer balance line level in and out with these little switches here. And they let you uh, go to line mode if, okay. if you so wish. Okay, neat. That is not yeah, something yeah, you yeah. often see in a, uh, uh, in a pedal of, of any kind. So. Yeah, it's sort of designed for either um, people using high impedance guitar kind of things or with synths or drum machines or whatever. Nice. Yeah, yeah. C can fun. we hear it? I mean, where does it go yeah. to and from? So, uh, let's just see. I've got a, from the beautiful Zoom rhythm track, it's doing a thoroughly, uh, fairly disgusting bit of... Um, so, uh, as you go left to right, is it some sort of difference in... Essentially, the signal path runs from left to right. And so it is comprehensible when you think about it. You've got input gain, different kinds of op-amp and transistor, misbias, transistor boosts, a sort of overall op-amp gain, upwards clipping, downwards clipping, which are different types of diodes, germanium, silicon, and some... Oh, wow. So there's all discrete circuitry inside the unit, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. Each of these positions actually is on a multi-way switch. Crikey. and selects like a different component or a different uh, capacitor value or because that's the the fun things with these is you can switch um, right well let, let's hear some uh, as you switch because I'm, I'm interested to hear the difference in sound okay, so. yeah. here is our beautiful loop <laughs> and this first one is just a kind of um, so that's the initial gain yeah sort of an op amp gain and then you've got kind of misbiased transistor sort of gains, very misbiased transistor gains, and then zero is bypass. So how many, how many, I'm just trying to think, when you could say it goes to 11, this goes up to what, 11 billion, 99 billion, or is it, it what? In theory, it's 11 billion, but probably only about 10 billion of those make a sound. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty good. That's a pretty good ratio. Yeah, because things like the um, the the PLL. Oh, it's doing something. It might not do certain things. Wow, that's. Yeah. Wow, I wasn't expecting that. That's yeah. random. <laughs> That'll make more sense on a different thing if I go to. Well, or else it'll do nothing. <laughs> How interesting. <laughs> So this is this is obviously comes from a very creative mind. Where where did you get this idea from? Because it just seems like such a well, off the wall in many ways. Some of it came from messing about trying to design a decent fuzz, and then uh, thinking, oh, that sounds good. I like those components, and oh, I like that configuration. Then right. So not having not being able to make your mind up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I wanted to have them all and be able to switch between them, and then you find subtle combinations like, oh, this kind of preamp stage with this amount of bias and that kind of clipping right it's, it's quite you can get really into the details and you can do um, the kind of more straightforward uh, guitar overdrive and those right. sort of fuzzy sounds as well and I guess you just have to remember the number to recall the preset yeah yeah once you once you got just it you scribble it down on the back of a uh, yeah point. yeah so your beautiful assistant here has uh, yeah. the original <laughs> prototype which looks that's great. Is that an, an old uh, tool case? Yeah, yeah, that's a BT yeah, a tool case, actually. Okay, so inside is a lot of stuff. Yeah. So is this is that sort of point to point wiring happening inside here as well? This is all surface mount. Right. And because um, there was just no other way we'd fit all that in a little box like this. 
even with like um, a double-sided board with stuff on both sides. It was, um, but luckily our PCB layout and general wonderful person Grindle from Life is Unfair did a fantastic job of taking that complete mess and turning and, oh, it. Oh, and they're turning it. Into, so they tidied your room for you, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, I mean, you, some of that stuff is very extreme. Can you get more subtle and sort of saturated things as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me get to um, see. I've got the. I'll, I'll just dial some of this back a bit, and I'll go to like uh, just kind of um, a bit of germanium. Oh, let's just put it on zero. And. Yeah, I should be doing something. Oh, come on. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. So that's like um, fairly clean, really. And then you could um, have a bit of silicon. And then just bring the gain on that a bit. And then cut some of the uh, treble on the output. Hopefully that's oh, right. interesting. So you've yeah. got that's really quite wide granular control over this as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, the, the fun thing is with um oh this it's made a bit nasty with that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that's sounding like. Um, oh, that's a cool thing. Yeah. Oh, nice. And the fun thing with these switches, like on this last one, it's a switched capacitor filter rather than just changing a resistor value like right. you would normally do with a tone control. So a switch capacitor filter is the kind of thing you find in a Neve or something where you actually um, move the frequency around rather than just, just adjusting the amount of cut. Right, oh, okay, yeah, interesting. Yeah. So it's, it's one of the fun things you can do with these switches. Or on the um, one just before it, it's like uh, different pairs of diodes and combining capacitors and diodes in interesting ways. It's a really interesting idea. I mean, it's almost like a kind of ultra, an, an infinitely circuit bending. It, it's sort of an analog FPGA, right? Yeah, yeah. And you can do some things that are just completely wrong and uh, a lot of pedals just wouldn't let you do, like uh, putting the bias to values it. Actually, that's still sounding quite nice, but <laughs> really make it start to give up. Yeah, that's sounding quite nasty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like there's a bit of that sort of battery death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sound. yeah. That's like a kind of dying battery. Yeah, kind of really, you should have a random number generator button that you could just press and it'll just auto. So, like bingo. You oh, that, that would first, be fun. First billion bingo. Maybe yeah. you do an app and you just kind of dial well, this number in. Yeah. Well, we wanted to have. Do you remember those old stamp things where you turn the things and get the numbers? Oh, yeah, yeah, And then yeah, do yeah. your stamp. We wanted to have it so if you push this down, it would, like, print it on a piece of paper. Oh, that would be beautiful. <laughs> that, that is. But sounds like it might add to the expense quite a lot. Yeah, yeah, that. that would be extremely... So I mean, are these in the world now? Are these prototypes? Where, where are you with these? At the moment, these are the, these are the only two in existence. Right. Um, but I've got another 50 boards at home which are complete. Ready to go. Um, yeah, and we've got another 50 boxes, so it's just a case of putting more together now. And I'm guessing this is probably not going to be the cheapest of things because there's a lot of stuff going on there. What, what yeah. have, you, have you got a final price in mind? About uh, 435. Okay, for a boutique pedal that does that with that much configuration. It's, that's it's not crazy. And, and again, it's the, um, that it is usable with line. It's kind of designed to be able to use with synths and line sources as well as guitars. Yeah. You know, because um, obviously you kind of, uh, this format, you associate with guitars and I did want something I could play you know I am a guitarist at heart right okay <laughs> I did want something I could actually play with my guitar so it had to have the same with this as well it had to have has to have a guitar input on it right okay uh, high impedance where do, oh so teachingmachines.co.uk that's what I was looking for that's the place to find out and keep abreast of it so people will be able to order them soon will it yeah it's on the website and I think it's in the shop on the website it should be Okay. So it should be uh, all ready to go. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs>